how has your week been? I trust you've had a very beautiful week so far. Um, especially in a week where Nigeria qualified for the final. Congratulations, everyone. I was with all the bad goals on the social media. If you want to, uh, somebody cannot lose a game in peace again, Abby. Now, wow. Eh? Kyo. Kyo. I'm actually wishing the Super Eagles a massive win all the way. So let me say like, most people have expressed their expectations that the cup will be a neighbor. <laughs> the cup will be back here. So welcome everybody. Today I promised I was going to continue. Today I was going to continue um, the series on your character, your relationship, your character, your relationship, your character, your relationship. So let's gather around. If there's anyone you know might be interested in this and is not with us and you'd like to call their attention to the fact that the conversation has started and we want to make it as um, interactive as possible so let's have i mean do the favor of letting letting them know that my character is live and it's always a pleasure to be here and come around and add value to people mind your character is a personal effectiveness and public enlightenment platform so there are two broad things that we do we help you be more effective as a person for instance the topic i'm running the series i'm running right now they are all personal effectiveness um, topics and that's because it helps you be more effective in your love life okay and sometimes we do public enlightenment so if you followed me on my facebook timeline you would have seen that this year i decided to bring into people's consciousness a remind reminder and remembrance yes the things that they may be forgetting that have to do with character and having a society that we all can be proud of so if you're joining me already thank you for joining and if you are going to join sometime in between the show, welcome and let's have a beautiful ride together. I left a quote online before I came live, just about around four. And I said that, did you know that character takes, uh, love takes on the character of the person that is in love? Did you know that love takes on the character of the person that is in love? And I said, if you want to love well, if you want to love well, build character that supports true love. Today we hear that there is fake love and there is true love. But there is no fake love or true love. There are only fake people in love or true people in love. Love takes on the character of the person that is in love. You can keep that close to your heart or write it as a quote that you're hearing. Our love takes on the character of the person that is in love. So if you want to love well, build character that supports true or better love. When you are right in love, when you are right character-wise in love, then your love will be right. So today, in the spirit of making it right, I want to talk about a few poor or weak character traits that can affect your relationship or destroy your relationship that's what i want to quickly talk about right now and let's go if you're ready i'm ready i'm ready i'm ready i'm ready the first of them and I must let you know that there are a few of them that I already have done videos and put, uh, well, you're going to be seeing them online. There's some of them, 
that I've done videos around and we're going to be putting them online for you to see. So I'll be the ones I'll be mentioning today are ones that I have not discussed at any other platform. So you can catch up with others. So I'll stop wherever I can stop today and then we'll go ahead and have you watch the ones that are online that are online okay so we will move on now from there okay mr samuel how you fire welcome so i'm going to skip I have discussed a few of them in videos that have been put, uh, that have been recorded and you're going to find them online. We'll be dropping them. So I've already discussed unrealistic expectation as one of those attributes or traits that can affect your love relationship. I have already also discussed overestimation of self, so you can catch up with those videos. I've also discussed in the video oversensitivity that is when you're oversensitive and i've also discussed insensitivity i've discussed that i have discussed um, i think i've also discussed okay yeah i've just discussed all of those ones and i discussed insecurity yeah i discussed insecurity so insecurity oversensitivity um oversensitivity overestimation of self and unrealistic expectations there are already videos that you can catch up with as we drop them on facebook so you can look for them on mind your character youtube page you can look for them on my uh, youtube channel pardon me you can look for those topics on mind your character youtube channel when you do then you'll be able to catch up with what we have got for you but in the meantime we are going to be picking on a few others and learning so follow me as we go poor character traits that can affect your relationship so i started by saying that love takes on the character of the person that is in love if you're humble it will reflect in the way you love if you are caring it to reflect in the way that you love so many of these things are who we are that we bring into our love relationships and then they eventually affect the way people give or receive love give love to us or receive love for us from us last week i mentioned one trait that you should not toy with and that is unteachability when you are not teachable so take that as the very first one i mentioned last week you have to be teachable to have a great relationship. You can come into your relationship acting like you have learned all that you ever have to learn and you cannot learn anything from any other person. So be teachable. So unteachability is a positive or a weak character trait. You should not, you should not, and you should not, um, You should not okay so what i've just done was to my broadcast is for don't worry to be back in case you can't see me right now on busted the original side to be back and uh, resume okay so um on teachability i'll go to the next one the next one is being unforgiving you should not you should not and you should not um, trade. What do you do? Everybody has a tendency to feel hot. So it is not wrong to feel hot. But when you are hot, what do you do with being hot? So I'm both looking at those poor seniors that they affect your relationship. Let's say it straight up as it is. You have to learn to understand what the late Bimbo Dukoya once said. She said that marriage is for two forgivers. So if you are not a forgiver, you are not supposed to even go into marriage at all because you will feel hurt, not because the person intends to hurt you, but situations will happen. So in, in being able to forgive people, 
one thing will help you and that will lead me to the second point i've mentioned the second point and i'll help you see how it helps you take care of unforgiveness you have to make up your mind to be forgiven in a relationship you don't have you don't possibly have a great any other choice around it so the let me board dukoya said marriage is for two forgivers two forgivers you have to make up your mind that you will learn it. So if you have grown all your life being bitter, petty, wallowing in what people have done, and you find it very difficult to snap out of it or to become um, forgiven, well, and you are in a relationship or in a marriage, maybe before you are married or when you're already married, take it from me, you will necessarily need to learn to forgive. So I'm going to mention the second weakness or poor character trait that can be personal to you that could affect your relationship. Then I'll show you how it can be a solution to the first one. So today I've mentioned unforgiving, being unforgiving or unforgiveness. Unforgiveness affects your relationship. So, and it's a trait. It's a trait, it's a quality. It's a capacity you can be, it's an attribute. Apart from it being every other thing, I know that there's a spiritual dimension to forgiveness or unforgiveness, but there is a love demand dimension to it. There is a you dimension, who you are, who you have been, how you have, how you handle issues. So next is, next is taking things personally. Taking things personally. Taking things personally is weakness. It is not strength. And it does mean that you have an incomplete assessment of certain parts of what you're, you're looking at. For instance, if you are married to Mr. A, and Mr. A has always been a loving man, has always been a loving man, before you got married, you've always known him to be loving, caring, and then when you got married, you found out that his inability to manage his time or schedule well is getting in the way of his being caring the way you have known it. I'm not excusing Mr. A. I'm just saying that as the person in the life of Mr. A, you owe him that place of isolating the issue from who he is as a person. Isolating the issue with Mr. A from who Mr. A is as a person. If you do not learn it, these things are learnable. The reason why things are called character traits is because they can be built or broken down. They can be developed. You can move from so bad to so good. You can move from so good to so bad. So I have used an example of Mr. A, who before you got married was very good was all over you and then all of a sudden you begin to feel that maybe he was he was pretending at that point so if you, if you look carefully it could be an uh, a race to ensure that things work well and he's not managing that season of his life well and now you notice that it does not show the care he used to show rather than Conclude that he is no more caring. Oh, so you were lying. So you were packaging. So you were unreal. If you're sure about what you saw before you married him, and you know him to be a truthful person, and you know him to be a truthful person, what I will advise you to do is to separate the issue from his person. The issue is that I have noticed that you haven't been showing care the way you used to. Rather than conclude that Mr. A is not caring, Mr. A has lost all that he used to be, or he probably was fake. How do you do this? So when you learn to separate the issue from the person, you will bring the issue to him, not angry with him, but coming to say what you don't like about the issue. I've noticed this, and... I know you've not always been like this. So you say the only reason why you can say I know you have not always been like this is because you have separated him from the issue. What could be the issue? I noticed you don't demonstrate this and that 
the way he used to do before. With that, he's able to calmly explain, particularly if he's a person of understanding and maturity, and both of you are able to settle that issue, and unforgiveness will not have his way. So I said the first point I'm discussing today about poor or weak personal character that can affect your relationship is unforgiveness. One of the reasons why people find it difficult to forgive is because they have imputed the issue on the person. So if you learn not to take things personally, you will be able to separate the person from the issue. When you separate the person from the issue, you'll find out that you still love them in spite of the fact that they don't care. Why? Because you always knew that they deserve love. And you will somewhere in your heart have the understanding that they probably still love you and you'll be able to help them out of whatever they are struggling with. I hope those two have been well understood and that it's helpful for us. I'm going to talk on another one which has not been spoken about before and I'm going to mention rigidity as a poor trait. Rigidity. What does rigid rigidity mean? It means being inflexible. You have a point of focus, you take that point of focus, you stay on that point of focus, you don't care what another person is seeing, you are not willing to see any other side. Okay, so this is how I'm going to help you because today I'm looking at weak character traits that can affect your love relationship and how to avoid them getting to that point. Because it's not only, I was saying in one of the videos that I did, which I believe you find on YouTube, mind your character don't forget check mind your character on youtube if it's not there already it should be uh, it should be there any moment from now i did say in one of those videos that people say that the top three things that cause issues in relationship are communication sex and money but i dare say that sex has no capacity in itself to create problem Communication has no capacity in itself to create problem. Money is neutral. It has no capacity in itself to create problem. Listen to me before you jump ahead and think I don't know what I'm saying. Well, the point I'm making is the people in the relationship and their character towards money, the people in the relationship and their character towards communication, the people in the relationship and their character towards sex is what creates the problem. For instance, in communication, if you're supposed to learn how to talk peaceably and you choose to talk anyhow, it wasn't communication that caused the problem. It was your wrong use of communication. So who needs to change? You. You need to go and perfect the art of communicating. If it has to do with sex, which has been said to be a major concern for people in relationship. I would again say that it is not sex in itself that is the problem. It is how you treat it. So I hear that a lot of women will say something like, I'm tired. I've had a long day. Or you, that is the husband, you already know that she has had a long day, she's tired and fucked out. There are moments when you are supposed to see reason. Sacrifice is part of love. So ensuring that whatever engagement you want to have with her is something that profits both of you is what makes it mutual. Because sex in itself does not satisfy anybody. It is the mutuality and consent and win-win in it that makes it fun. So it is the attitude with which you are communicating, relating when it has to do with your sexual life, or even the way you treat money. For instance, if you came into your marriage as a, what's that word now? They call it akagon. That is, you are very, very greedy with money. Greed is the issue. Money was not the issue. So take care of your greed and money will no longer be an issue. What if you came in as a woman who everything about you is money? Once money is concerned, if you don't have money, hide your face. If that's your, you know, that's your motto. <laughs> that kind of a woman would have an issue around money. Not because money is an issue. So let us place these things where they belong. So rigidity. 
for instance, has to do with being too fixed, refusing to shift ground, refusing to see other people's views. And to help you on that, I will let you know that one of the reasons why you should never be rigid is because you don't know everything. If you are a Christian, you know that there's a place in the Bible that says we do not know as we ought to know. That means there's always something you don't know. Number two reason why you should not be rigid is every human being has got a blind side. Now, I am in front of you. If I decide to look 360 degrees, it might be difficult for me. In my seated position, so let me try. So I go from this angle, right? And I pan my eyes and my head. I go like that. I get to this point. By the time I get to this point, it's already becoming very difficult. I might not be able to cover 360 degrees. Even standing and wanting to know what's happening behind me and in front. So the humility to understand that you don't know everything. The view is not all yours. The view is not limited to your scope, will help you know that in your relationship, rigidity will not help. You could be rigid about what you know, you could be rigid about a belief system, you could be rigid about a culture, you could be rigid about a tradition, you could be rigid about what your mom said it is. People can be rigid about so many things. In a relationship that will work, flexibility must be given a place. And flexibility is one of the hallmarks of matured people. They know when to step down. They know when to shift. They know when to take things lightly. Maybe lighter than anyone. So rigidity. So rigidity has a positive stance. For every of these things I've mentioned, I'm trying to help you see the positive side of it. So rigidity may have a positive stance. And that is when you are rigid about the right things. When you are rigid about... Now, another word for rigidity is uncompromising. Uncompromising. So know what you should be uncompromising about. It should not be the things that are not life and death. Things that are not major. Things that don't have so much to offer you in your relationship. So you must weigh issues and check how important is this issue to our relationship. So I said that there's a positive tilt, a plus tilt. There's a way you can use it positively. Don't use it negatively. And that is being uncompromising. Be uncompromising about your love for your spouse or your partner. Be uncompromising about your commitment to loving, to honoring them. Be, be uncompromising about serving God together. Be uncompromising about anything that is great and good. But guess what? When it is not in that league, it is called rigidity. It means that you need to be flexible, and flexibility is the rule of maturity. So there are moments in your relationship when you have to quit being rigid about things that are not, you know, certain things that are, they are not, the things some people are rigid about, you are just wondering that, is it? And then it causes fight and tension in the relationship. Okay? So, I have been able to share three with you. I both help you see those portraits as well as how to avoid them being an issue for you. I've helped you see that love takes on the character of the person that is in love. Love takes on the character of the person that is in love. So, if you want to love better... If you want to love better, learn the character traits that support true love. I've mentioned a few today. Number one, be uncompromising about your love. Number two, be flexible where necessary. Your wife says she wants to cut her hair. She really loves it. Like, and you, you like long hair. You know, that's one example. If it causes issues in relation with like kilo day. Now, if your wife cuts her hair, are you going to die? Is your breath connected to that hair? Now, I'm not trying to play down on men who love their wife's hair to be long. But I'm saying that in maturity and flexibility, there are times when you let people have their way. 
And there are other times when you know that, no, this world is uncompromising. They will honor you for being someone who can let them be them. So the woman is really, really loving, low cost. She says, maybe she's even saying, I have a headache. I like to pour water on my hair every day. I'm like, no, 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 in my life. I said that my wife's hair must be long. She cannot wear a low coat. Ah. Well, the choice is yours. The choice is yours. So every other one of these traits I will discuss in other videos. You can catch up with them. I started to do this as a life, as a foretaste. There are videos on Mind Your Character YouTube channel that you can catch up with where I have discussed other things like unteachable, selfishness, oversensitivity, um, overestimation of self. I've also taught um, unrealistic expectations. I've also taught um, ignorance and illiteracy. I've also taught lack of commitment and so many other things like that, right? So if you would like to see all of those, feel free to catch them up on your on the YouTube page, a channel that I mentioned. Thank you, Mr. Aino, for being part of this. So on the 24th of February, I am going to be having a closed group with lovers who don't want to get it wrong. Let's have a hangout virtually. And um, I'll give you updates on it. We'll leave updates online for you. So feel free to join. If you are in love and you don't want to make a mess of your opportunity to be with that special person in your life this year i am asking you to join me on the 24th we will you so, you so start seeing the flyers because they are ready and we will have to have a coven let's have a coven of lovers where you can come and talk about this is what you usually do that i don't like but it is virtual okay it is virtual this is what i've noticed about you maybe something you have been telling your spouse or partner and they have refused to agree that they are wrong. Bring them, bring them. 24th, let's do that for you. And it's again totally free. It's our gift for you for Valentine. So if you want more information, please leave a comment.